have the appointed hour. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Can I get a motion to adopt, adopt the agenda? So moved. A motion by Mr. Smith. I got a second by Mr. Here. Mitchell. All those in favor? All right. Um, Mrs. Pesson, would you like to start? Yeah, the presentation. Ms. Pesson comes forward to today's called meeting is really to work uh, with a lot of our stuff surrounding the bond and SPROST. And so Ms. Pesson will talk about some of the accounts that's needed to get us going in that direction. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I have before you this morning an approval for the check accounts that are necessary for SPROST 6. We need three accounts of the three investment accounts. The first one will be for our investment and all the bond proceeds coming in there. Uh, we we'll use that account uh, to transfer money into a new local account that will need application check writing purposes up here local in the region. Um, the next investment account will need to be used to help our uh, debt service payments and interest and card amounts to that. And the final account is the um, tax receipt account for SPOS 6. Anything above the debt service payment and the interest requirements there that should be held up. Uh, Straight into that tax receipts account. So uh, those are the three investments required to be in that construction account with the placement of bond proceeds account. That will fund our local, our new local account that we've got here at Chevron. Motion to approve the accounts. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. Any questions coming? Are three accounts uh, required for each block? I think that's the initial Well, the bond, the bond issue creates one of the, the debt service account and the construction Not the bond. Yeah. And the third one is just to separate the proceeds from the block. Block. That's correct. Which in another five years is well. Uh, Moving forward to SPLOS 7, then we'll be in another new account there. That's right. And we closed out SPLOS 4 uh, last year. And so the goal is to always close out one, of course, uh, as soon as we can. Any other questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor? All right. That moves. Yeah, the uh, supplemental bond resolution. Uh, today we have with us Brian Husky from Steeple. Also, transcribed with Ms. Stewart Melvin Cross to go over our documents and kind of where we are uh, with everything. So, gentlemen, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, and thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, we did, after a lot of planning, we did go out um, yesterday and market the school district's funds. Um, basically, what uh, over the past couple of days, I, th I think that you saw some numbers previously. Um, the market did sell off a little bit over the past couple of days, but we actually um, went in the market yesterday and got a very, very strong reception from the school district's funds. Um, of the $75 million of bonds we offered, we had over $300 million orders from a variety of buyers across the country as well as locally and regionally. Um, we ended up uh, locking in at a rate of 1.24%, and to put that in, in uh, relation to what we've been looking at historically, uh, when we first started looking at doing this bond authorization, we were looking at about a two to two and a quarter percent financing rate. Um, when the pandemic first hit, that spiked up to almost three percent. So now we're almost uh, two percentage points lower than where the high point was. Um, so a real good execution. It ended up funding about uh, eighty-six point eight million dollars of project funds um, based on the bond pricing and the premium generated. So you. We were able to generate some additional proceeds for the school district to undertake this capital program. Well, my, maintaining the, the commitment has always been to try to utilize about uh, 27, 28 million dollars or so of uh, the SPLOS on the five year SPLOS cycle. We were able to do that within that those constraints. Um, so, like I said, just a, a real good uh, reception. A lot of it was aided as well by the school district's um, assignment of the AA2 credit rating by Moody's. Um, that really put the, the school district in a very strong credit profile in relation to other school districts across the state as well. So I think it was recognized by the marketplace in general and just really was uh, a testament to what y'all are doing. 
questions on the financial side. On, on the premiums, the, is that um, is that people overpaying for a bond, or is it an oversubscription of the entire amount? It's, it's what they're basically agreeing with, that they'll pay you more upfront proceeds for a coupon is what basically an interest rate on, in, say, five years, whatever period of time it be. So they agree to pay you additional proceeds above the market. And as a, as a result, they get a higher coupon over the term of that bond or whatever the existing bond they buy. So the net net is that you're going to, the financing cost is still going to be the 1.24. Okay. You just pay, instead of issuing more bonds, you're paying more interest. And so you sort of switch, uh, switch the calculus a little bit. So the net debt service is going to be the same as the way you, you, you look at it. Um, that's it's really just a market preference right now. A lot of buyers want to get a little more premium in a low interest rate environment just to protect themselves from uh, a rising interest rate. That's really what it comes down to. So, so what this means for us is some of the data uh, that we've talked about in the past is we did not bond the full 83 million. So we still have that difference to be able to bond in the future if we need to for future projects without having to go back citizens to ask if they've already approved the 83. It also allowed us to, by issuing 75, still receive, as Brian mentioned, out 86.8 million in project funds that we'll be able to use when we originally said we got the 83. So we've got, we've got a little bit of wiggle room, especially when it comes to the new middle school. Uh, we anticipate getting some bedrock there that's going to increase the cost a little bit, uh, similar to what we had with Bill Gaines for middle school. Um, so that, that extra amount definitely does uh, help us um, build out the projects as we anticipate. Any other questions? Uh, uh, Brian, uh, just a curiosity question. The uh, oversubscription was, I think, uh, maybe more than three times correct that was available to, on the credit. Then how do you then decide who, who buys? Well, we ended up, as I said, uh, the I think the numbers that you, you're looking at right now, they were from uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, uh, Friday and Monday, the market sold up a little bit. So we actually went out and marketed the bonds at a 1.7. We, we got the $300 million of orders. We were able to strengthen that pricing. And it, it's, it's not a current bond basis. Some bonds are two times over subscribed. Some of them are five times over subscribed. So net net, we were able to lower the interest cost by three basis points to get that uh, more focused type of subscription so that we're not having three times the subscription. So that, that strength in prices allow, allowed us to, first of all, identify the buyers that wanted to stay in at those lower rates and that was being more aggressive, but also to benefit the school district by lowering that interest rate. And uh, general comments about our uh, movies uh, rating, our most recent rating from your perspective? It, um, it was, well, first of all, movies in general, they look very strongly at uh, a few characteristics of the school district. Financially, they are in very strong shape, and I think it's going to be strong shape. You have been in quite a while. Uh, they look historically at management and assign their rating based on management structure and management governance. So, and they basically said that, you know, that it's a testament to what is being done on the management side as well. Um, economically, I think it, it speaks for itself. A lot of the stuff that's going on in the, the city as well as county, as far as the economic development, tax base growth, sales tax growth, and the fact that you know you're seeing some of those uh, variables rebound since COVID hit. Um, you know, I think that when you're looking at yourself in relation to other school districts, um, the ratings start at AAA and go down from there. Um, at the AA two level, you're on par with uh, Hall County. You're on par with Dawson. You're on part of Jackson County, a lot of the your surrounding counties are rated similar. So I think it's really you know, a good indication of where y'all stand. But you know, in, in claiming it on a board basis financially as well as as well as economically. Um, another curiosity uh, <coughs> what what is the face value of the hip hip line? What can they sold? sold? They're, they're sold for five thousand dollars. Okay, and, and mostly are these institutional buyers or individuals? It is largely institutional. It uh, varies from insurance companies to trust departments to money market accounts. Um, I think we ended up getting um, a institutional buyers, about 40 different buyers interested in the bonds. Um, we did have some uh, retail, which is more your mother, mom and pop kind of people or individuals that can put in orders. 
but those are usually flowing through institutional uh, bids as well. But it is a lot of the market movers are driven by um, the institutional uh, bids. One thing about this bond amount and, and the debt service uh, is it comes out to about four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars a month on average is what we would be, um, which means it's about two thirds of what we budgeted at a lower end of our collections. So it's it's right in line with what we promised the citizens when we went to mark with this a little bit over the last couple of years, uh, but also gives us a third or more of um, SWAS collections to use for other projects over the next five years once this begins. Trey, I think I asked you this five years ago, uh, so for the benefit of the root, me, me first, and then our new members. Do you remember your answer five years ago? Uh, I'll just re ask. Um, the bond payments are different from my, my home mortgage payment in, in that I clear. Able, I can pay extra uh, principal to reduce the life of the right. mortgage, and that doesn't quite apply to the life of a bond. That is correct. Th these bonds are callable, but not during the first 10 years. So your first call date is November 1, 2030. So beginning in November of 2030, you would have the right to repay those bonds that were still outstanding as of November 1, 2030, without penalty, without premium. Uh, of course, general, these rates are, are historic. <laughs> I mean, it might be as low as the market has ever seen. Sure. So, you know, why you would do that, I don't know, but you might. You know, you might decide you had excess monies and you didn't want to pay the interest. You, you, you could, you could redeem the bond starting in November of 2013. Okay. And is there uh, any break or respite from our the last payment of our SWAS five from that day and the first payment of? The bonds on SWAS six. Is there is there a break in the payment schedule, or is it? There is. Um, we structured bonds are uh, two things. Bonds are the first principal doesn't occur until 2023, which is we'll have a full year of uh, SWAS coming in by that point in time to make that principal payment. The interest is capitalized for the first uh, two and a half years, um, so that basically we put the interest up front. Up front, front, up front fund it's the interest so that the district isn't having to levy or pay SWAS any kind of debt service until 2023, uh, May 1st, 2023. So that, that, that coincides with the new SWAS in line. So there won't be any impact up until that point. And so there will be a break, at, uh, a short break at the end of our SWAS 5 payments. It'll still be, Kathy, it'll still be those few months. So when our SWAS payments come in, Kathy will talk about all of that and how it comes in when we pay off our debt. And then we've got about three or four months of collections uh, that are, that do not have to go to pay the top bond debt, which is our excess. And so we'll still have those three or four months short. And then the next year, we'll start accruing uh, collections to pay off the new debt. Six it's following the same cycle we're doing. Yeah, now. The same cycle with, with with no overlap that. and the break is a traditional break that we would see after we collect the next one. Yeah. What Brian is referring to is um, the payments review for the interest mm -hmm. that's going to be taken out of the bond proceeds right. as capitalized interest so that we'll be covered for the year and a half. Yeah, through uh, November. Yeah, we'll have that money reserved. <laughs> you know what that allows us to do is work on the buildings now as opposed to waiting. Any other questions for Brian? Uh, just to clarify, uh, Dr. Williams, for the uh, general public and what we asked them to approve in a referendum, our, I guess our 
two or three projects that this that these proceeds will cover. As far as our number one priority, it's the second middle school. The second middle school is one that was our, our number one priority, but it was not the number one from a timeline standpoint. Uh, number two priority was revamping the game from high school campus and drive on the high school campus now you'll see the advanced study center uh, being built and so that's phase one of the entire process so priority one was the second middle school priority two was revamping the game from high school campus that's, that's what we specified yes on the and and within the next three years all of those projects will be So what are we what we are asking of the board is to adopt a supplemental bond resolution to approve the issuance of the bond uh, under the 75 million as the principal amount the principal payment uh, starting November of 2023 and running through November of 2042 and uh, those bonds would be secured by the spas and by ad valorem tax and also the resolution provides for the intercept program which y'all may recall is where you give notice to the state board of education that if for any reason the Gainesville school district could not make the payment the state would take the monies they were going to pay you and apply that toward the bond debt. Now that's never happened, in my knowledge, Brian, I don't know about you, but it, it, to any school district in Georgia. But by agreeing to uh, participate in the intercept program, you get the state's credit on your bonds. It's sort of like the state is guaranteeing your bonds by you electing to participate in the intercept program, and it gives your bonds a higher credit rating, which gives you a lower interest rate. So that's all that's for is to, to make your credit rating as strong as the state's credit rating and give you a lower interest rate. But do not anticipate that ever happening. If you would have to call on the state, you have your spots and have a long tax to pay that. But by doing that, you save interest costs by getting the higher credit rating. So the supplemental bond resolution approves participating in the intercept program. Okay, with the bond resolution, what are the subsequent steps that will take place uh, after this? Well, once the bond resolution is adopted this morning, we would then prepare closing documents and proceed to closing on the bond issue, which is September 15 is when we're uh, targeting a closing date of actual issuance of the bonds and receipt of the proceeds into the construction bond. Uh, the validation of the bonds is underway right now. Corey Kirby, your regular counsel, is working on that. We have a validation hearing on September 10th and anticipate no problems with that part of the process. And then we would close the bonds. Um, we will have documents to be executed and we'll prepare those and get with you, Jeremy, and Andy to sign those uh, sometime, well, usually sometime in September, early September. Fred, I signed a document and I did not, I admit, I did not thoroughly look at it where the state of Georgia was suing us. I'm sure that's a legal oh, formality. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the validation process I was talking about. Okay. Uh, when bonds are issued in Georgia, they have to be validated. And the validation is just a court proceeding to uh, assure those bonds are legal, legal valid and binding on, on the issuer. And, and uh, it, it goes back to an old process, but basically, uh, the process is you notify the local district attorney who brings a legal action for validation in the name of the state of Georgia against the issuer. 
And, and so that's why it was State of Georgia versus Gainesville School District. And that's what I was talking about. That's been filed and it is ongoing in, in the Superior Court. And we have a hearing date of September 10th. Just uh, sort of an ancient uh, process that was instituted sometime after the Civil War to make sure that bonds in Georgia were valid, to, to give the market assurance that these were good bonds. And that, that validation process continues still on the books, part of the law of Georgia, in order to issue bonds. Thanks for the history. <laughs> Supplemental bond resolution also approves the execution of a bond purchase agreement with Brian and Steeple to have the sale of the bonds to Steeple for these interest rates, these this pricing that he, he went over with y'all. Uh, and the supplemental bond resolution approves that. It's what it's called a firm underwriting once. You know, that's executed. Steeple is obligated to buy these bonds no matter what from the school district at these interest rates and, and, and uh, uh, provide the proceeds on closing. Of course, what Brian was saying, they've gone out and solicited orders to resell them in effect so that they, are, they have orders for these bonds. And it sounds like most of them covered. But sometimes, you know, in a firm underwriting, the underwriter is committed and doesn't have them all sold. He's taking the risk of, of whether he can sell them all at those interest rates. Uh, in this case, it sounds like not too much risk, hopefully, for, for Steve. But that's sort of the process. So do we need, we need a, a motion to adopt the resolution? Motion to adopt. A motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, any discussion on them? I would just like to thank Brian and Fred and also Corey Kirby uh, for the work they've done. They've done a great job in getting us to this point. This is something that we know as a school system, we were used to kind of a five-year bond with our squats, but to be able to do a 20-year bond, uh, we're just very thankful for the leadership they provided us with credit rating, uh, but also getting this squared away so that we can continue to uh, expand our services and our facilities for our middle school and high school students. Thank you. Now, just one last question on for Brian. The 60000 I think, that we paid to get the credit rating upgrade, mm -hmm. based on the math, we get that back in year one, more yeah, or less? Yes, um, the benefit of that rating equated to about five or seven basis points, seven basis points. I um, don't have it from you right now, but I think we did math, it was about $700,000 or so. Good insurance premiums. Not too bad. No. Also, Brian, Al probably and Will Cobb are old friends and good we'll citizens and uh, good run a good office here. Or so we'll know. Well, I appreciate that. Motion, oh, to, motion to adjourn. The motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion. Meeting is adjourned.